with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Len Decker nervously opened and closed the cylinder of his six-gun. Across the room, the sheriff sat quietly, and a third man, a bald-headed individual, looked nervously from the clock to the door of the adjoining bedroom. It's taken Doc a long time. Too long, Baldy. You're going to get that bullet out of my cousin pretty quick. I'm going into that bedroom and see what the delay. Take it easy, Lamb. Mind your own business, Sheriff. Put the gun away and give Doc Stevens a chance. Your cousin was hit mighty close to the heart. Doc said he didn't have more than a one to ten chance of pulling him through. Doc Stevens had better pull him through. Lem, you've had it in for the doc ever since he found out that some of your livestock was diseased. No one ever shot good livestock before Doc Stevens came here. He should be run out of town. Now, Lem, Waldy, you know that I'm not the only one who said that. Ask Hank Frisbee. Doc made him fill in his well. Hank should be grateful for that. Doc found the water wasn't fit to drink. Full of fever germs. It's so a wonder his family hadn't been sick. Yeah. You better pull my cousin through. That's all I got to say. Hey, Lem, any word yet? No, not yet, Sam. Close the door. I'll let you know. Right. <coughs> Lem Decker, what's going on? You see what those boys had with them? I saw a fence rail. Yeah. If my cousin dies, Stevens is going for a ride on that rail. Lem, you can't do it. Leave your breath, Sheriff. I'm holding this gun on you. But I just... I said, shut up! Five more minutes, I'm going into that room and see why Doc's taking so long. Doc's coming out. Well, Stephen, Decker, you said you found your cousin in the back room of the cafe. And I know why. He was shot because he found out who robbed the bank where he worked. He was there to meet me and the sheriff and tell us what he knew. But he didn't tell you at all. He was shot by someone outside the window before we got there. Uh, I wish he'd had a chance to talk. He... He's still unconscious. The bullet was very close to the heart. Is he going to get well? He's dead. What? Dead? I did my best. That's a lie. You could have saved him. You're likely in with those crooks. And you better Put that down. down. Stay where you are. I'll use it on you. You'll pay for this, Stevens, and you'll pay a plenty. Wait a minute, Nick. How 
arrived at a campsite at the bottom of a gully near the edge of town. They dismounted and untied some of the camp gear that had been carried behind the saddle. As soon as we made camp, Tonto, we're going to town and see how Doc Stevens is making out. Hard oh, race, say, him have plenty of trouble. Oh, he has new ideas. Ideas that are good for the West. He believes that water and food should be tested and sewage properly disposed of. Uh-huh. He believes in testing cattle and culling out the diseased stock. A rancher not like to shoot cattle. Yes, I know it. Dr. Stevens has a lot of prejudice to overcome. But his kind of man is good for the West. His kind are needed here. Not a silver. Want to saddle off, too. Uh, you say we go to town? Yes. Uh, have to wait a while, Silver. I... Hello. Hear that crowd? Ah. Uh, Sounds like lynch mob. I'll run to the top of the gully. Might be able to see something. I'll take over with you. Look, over there. Uh, that plenty of men. They're riding someone on a rail. Me see him. Hands tied behind his back. Doc Stevens, call your horse. Here's the Come, Scout. <laughs> That'll be for the easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Come, Silver. Look, Scout. and Silver dashed across the level stretch toward the angry men who were tearing the doctor a slide of fence rail. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were quite close when they were discovered by the mob. There were shouts and yells of surprise at the sight of the Indian and a man who wore a mask. Several of the men who were not holding the fence rail went for their guns as the charging horses came to a rearing halt. Oh, 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 Hey, you're not killers. You're townsmen. You don't want murder on your hands. We're teaching this man a lesson, and it's our own business. Put your guns away. Leave the doctor alone and go on back to your home. We don't want no gunplay, Mr. Biddick. Well, I don't mind gunplay if it's needed. Especially when it's a masked man on the receiving end. Now clear out. Bam, move. Get before I shoot. Lem Decker means what he says, mister. You better hightail. Lem Decker, huh? Are you going for your gun? Yes, I am. No! Hey, he shut the gun right out of his hand. Just go on, Tonto, and cut the ropes. We're taking Doc back to his home. We want no interference. You chicken little galoot! Why don't you draw an open fire? The masked man's asked for it. Are you lucky you didn't get your hand blown off, Lim? I'm not taking a chance. I'm not making gunplay with that masked hombre. Over here, Doctor. I... I don't know who you are, stranger, but... Give you... me your hand. I'll pull you up behind my saddle. Okay. Our town's too small for that small boy. We don't want no part of it. Nevertheless, he's settled in your town. He's going to stay there. Now, go home and tell your wives and children how brave you are. Tell how you run a defenseless, unarmed doctor on a rail. Keep an eye on them while we ride away, Tonto. If anyone draws, you know what to do. Uh, me fix them. Get him up, Scout! Following the doctor's instructions, the Lone Ranger guided Silver to a small white cottage where Stevens and his wife had settled with high hopes of a great career in the new country, hopes that had become increasingly dim during the past weeks. Stevens told his wife of the fence rail incident and his rescue. Oh, Jonathan, you poor thing. I'm all right now, Jane. This masked man and the Indian saved my life. Why did you do it? Men like the doctor are making the West a better place. Well, I tried to, but with Lem Decker against me... Why, uh, why is he against you? Well, first I found that some of his cattle was diseased. I reported it to the sheriff. The sheriff made him shoot the livestock. Yes, I heard about that. And then Lem's cousin was wounded, critically wounded. I did my best, but the man died. Lem thought I should have saved him. He had a crowd ready to take me from town... Well, you saw them. My husband has tried to do what's best for the people, but but they resent it, even though it's for their own welfare. My usefulness here has ended. We'll have to leave this town. Leave? 
No one will have anything to do with me now. You're going to quit? What else can I do? Stick and fight it out. Jonathan can't fight men like Len Decker. He's off the world of his cousin. If he feels the doctor might have saved him, he'll not rest until he's had revenge. I'm going to call on Decker. Perhaps I can change his mind. No, you can't change his mind. Well, there's another reason why he's bitter about the death of his cousin. Oh, what is it? Well, Sam worked in the bank. Yes. It was a robbery, and Sam found out who'd committed it. He was going to meet Len and the sheriff in the cafe and tell them. And before they got there, someone fired through the window and got Sam. I see. If Sam had lived, he could have named the murderer and the thief. Well, the sheriff and Lem will probably accuse me of aiding the crook. Doctor, you're needed here, and you've got to stay. I'll be back as soon as I've talked to Lem Decker. Come on, fellow. It was shortly after darkness had fallen. Lem Decker was in his home when a rap sounded on the door. It was the bald-headed waiter from the cafe. Oh, you, boss. I want to see you for a minute, Decker. Want to step inside? What I got to say can be said right here on the porch. How much did your cousin tell you? Why, what do you mean? Did he name the man who shot him? Now, why do you ask? He was the first one to get to him after the shot. He was conscious for a few minutes, right? Yeah. He told you who shot him, didn't he? Maybe he did, Baldy. And maybe he mentioned a certain party that wears a white apron when he works in the cafe. That's what I thought. Well, get this, Decker. Don't make any statements you can't prove. Listen, Baldy. When I make a statement, I'll have proof to back it up. If you're smart, you'll let things rest as they are. If I find you going out of your way to make trouble for me, there'll be more gunplay. Next time, it might be you that the doc can't save. Or your wife. Why, you Don't forget that. Down. The same goes if you get that Lone Ranger snooping around for evidence against me. The Lone Ranger? Yeah. Oh, I'm not likely to see that man. You've already seen him. What? You mean to say you didn't know who snatched the doc out of your hands this afternoon? You mean uh, that? Maybe I shouldn't have told you. But now that you know he's around here, you better keep away from him. If I see you two together, I figure that maybe you're telling him things about me. You got any more to say? Just watch yourself, that's all. It'd be a shame if there was to be another killing. Good night, Decker. Hmm? Oh. Oh, just someone on, on business, that's all, I think. Well, if it's any more of that shameful sort of business dealing with Dr. Stevens, you'd better forget it. Oh, don't start that again, Martha. Oh, very idea. I don't know what Stevens has done to me. He made you shoot some cows. Not only that. If he just pulled my cousin through this afternoon, I, I wouldn't be in the... You what? Never mind. What were you going to say? Forget it, Martha. I, I just... In the name of mercy, Lim, what's ailing you? Martha, I, I got to think things out. I'm going to the room I use for an office. I want to be alone for a little while. Mm, you just feel. I got it a lamp in there. The window's open. Better warn Martha not to leave him like that. Exactly. What you? You keep watch down. You came through that window. Yes. Well, get out of here. Get out of here. You can't be seen here. Keep your voice But down. you don't understand. I want to talk to you. No, I can't talk to you. Not you, please. Now get out of here before it's too late. No! No! Shot comes from out there. Decker. You you did this. Tell her run. I'll go after him. My back. An Indian. You shot him. Stay where you are. I can use this gun. Me not shoot him. Don't lie to me. I heard what was said. Keep your hands up or I'll pull the trigger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. The Lone Ranger didn't know that Len Decker's wife was holding a gun on Toto. He rode hard, trying to catch a glimpse of the man who had fired through the window, but without success. The sky was overcast, and there was neither moon nor stars to break the darkness that had engulfed the gunman. Oh, oh, oh easy. Look over this way, Silver. Oh, boy! In the meantime, Baldy walked into the room where Martha held Toto at gunpoint. Oh, oh, thank goodness you came. I heard a shot and... Great day. That's Lem on the floor. Yes, yeah, see if he's still alive. Or oh, better still, hold a gun on that Indian. Oh, I'd never carry a gun, Martha. Well, take this one. I Me mean, not shoot him. Don't give us that, you lying poor cat. Where's your partner? Baldy, Lem's still breathing. we got to get a doctor for you him. You better do what you can without a doctor, Mrs. Decker. Whatever it is, it'd be better than Stevens could do. Well, there's water here. I'll be the wound. I ask you a question, Indian. Where's your partner? He hear you. Someone rode away as I came in the room. Yeah? Well, that's a masked critter. Me? Did you see him? No, no, but Lem told me about a masked man who broke up the... Who saved Dr. Stevens this afternoon. That's the one. He's been out to get Lem ever since he got a hunch that Lem knew who killed his cousin. You better cut shirt away from wounds. I can do without your you better help. Better use hot water. You shut up. You're already done enough. That's wounds. Plenty bad. Plenty close to heart. You need doctor. I reckon you'd like to see that no account sawbones operator. Then you know Lem wouldn't have a chance to get conscious. Oh, Paul here. It is a bad thing. I'll take this murdering redskin to the sheriff and tell him to get men out hunting that masked man. Paul there. Never was sure as Dr. Stevens come here. Martha, it's the same as putting another bullet in the limb. Wouldn't surprise me to learn that Stevens got a share of that cash that was stolen from the bank. That's why he's so friendly with the murdering thieves. Bully, he's breathing awful thing. I'll hurry with the redskin. Maybe the sheriff can help with Lem. He's had some gunshot experience. Now go on, redskin, get started. It's jail for you. <laughs> brought him right here to your office, Sheriff. What's your name, Indian? Uh, me, Tonto. What you got to say? Me not shoot, fella. Huh? I didn't expect you to admit it. Is that masked man your partner? Uh, me not talk. Well, suit yourself. I'll lock you up and we'll go see if there's anything we can do for Lamb. Him hit plenty bad. Him need doctor. Baldy, maybe we should get Doc Stevens. And let him do the same for Lamb as he did for Lamb's cousin? Well... Uh, I don't know. I tell you, Sheriff Stevens is hand in glove with the crooks and robbed the bank. Yeah, doggone it. Looks like I was all wrong. Wrong about what? I was downright sore at Lem for the way he started a regular lynch mob against the dog. Oh, that wasn't a lynch mob. <laughs> it might as well have been. When I heard that the masked man and the Indian broke it up, I was all for them. Get in there, Tonto. <laughs> Now you see why they rescued Stevens. Well, we better go to the Decker place and see what we can do. You'd better take some of the boys along with us in case that masked crook comes back to finish his job. Uh, I wish I knew how to figure, Doc Stevens. I've been backing him up all along. There's a lot of men outside waiting to hear about the prisoner. They saw me bring him here. Hey, boys! Come with me and the sheriff. We got a chance to catch the Redskins' partner. Baldy. It's all right, Sheriff. The more we get, the better. Hey, Baldy, is he the same one who shot Lim's cousin? Sure he is. Hold on, Baldy. We're not sure. Wait a minute, boys. What's more, Doc Stevens is in coach with us. Well, listen, listen, boys. Baldy's not sure what he says. It's just a guess. Boys, he's mad. He's the one who saved the Doc. You remember him from the afternoon. Oh, oh, Are you going manhunting with us? Townsmen were not the only ones who headed for the ranch house just beyond the limits of the town. The Lone Ranger rode with Dr. Stevens and his wife. I don't may have done all that can be done, Doctor. You can check on his work. But you don't even know that Decker lived. No, I didn't go back to find out after I lost track of the gunman. Shall we walk right in? Yes, of course. Lots bigger house than Decker's cousin. The room's over this way. Oh, 
Steady, Mrs. Decker. It's all right, Martha. The masked man brought the You, you, you killed her. Just a minute. Mrs. Decker. You killed her. You weren't satisfied with one murder. You had to kill my husband as well. Is he dead? Yes. Yes, and I'll square things for him. Martha. Put that gun down, Martha. Uh, you think I killed your husband? You or your Indian friend. Where is Toto? He's gone. You, you shot him? No. No, but I wish I had. Mrs. Decker. Todd and I were in the room with your husband when the shot came to the window. I went to try to catch the killer, but I lost him in the darkness. I brought the doctor, so he... I'm not in... You'd better let me take that gun. Stay where you are. Be careful. Mrs. Decker is no murderer. She won't shoot. Don't you come any nearer. Stay there, I'll tell you. Let me put that gun away. No. There. No. That's better. Thank goodness. Take care of her, Mrs. Stevens. You'll feel better for crying. There, there, Martha. Come on over here with me. Sit down and tell me everything. We'll go to the next room, Doctor. I'd like to know where Toto went. Martha's in no condition to talk. No, I can't question her for some time. There's Decker. Poor devil. If Martha thinks Todd and I killed him, we may have a hard time proving otherwise. Someone tried to dress the wound. It wasn't Toto. Shot in almost the same place as his cousin. Well, at least they won't say I'm responsible. I can't... Stevens, do. did you see that? What? His eyelid moved. Wait. This man's not dead. He's alive. Well, my bag. Yeah, I'll open it for you. He's too far gone. Probably internal hemorrhage. Do what you can. There's nothing I can do. Look where the bullet entered. You said the cousin was shot in the same place. Yes, and when I did my best to save him, I was accused of killing him. Well, I won't touch this man. Maybe when they see that he dies without me... Stevens, then... I took you away from that mob so you could carry on your practice. I know, but I... I... thought you'd stand by and watch a man die. But the operation calls for working very close to the heart. There's not a chance in a hundred. What chance is there if you don't operate? None. But at least there'll be no mark of my scalpel. Oh, Jonathan, Martha just told me. What? Baldy the bartender heard the shooting. He came here and took the Indian to jail. He's in jail now? Yes. Charged with murder if Decker dies. Doctor, he can't die. He's got to live. To say that neither Toto nor I fired that shot. Is he already dead? No, get hot water, lots of it. But I tell you, I... Bring every lamp and candle in the house to this room. Here, this table will do. I'm sorry, but... Well, see, Martha, he's alive. Lanny's in bed. He's, he's very low. You're going to save him. You've got what few people get. You've got a second chance. <laughs> A dozen lamps and as many candles lighted the room where Dr. Stevens prepared to operate. Len's pulse was feeble. It seemed as though his life was measured in minutes. But you've got to save him. He's the only one who can clear Toto. The doctor's hand trembled as he chose a scalpel and prepared to make an incision. Steady, doctor. What's that? I'll look out the window and see. The, the mob. I hear it again the same as the other time. You can't stop now. For me. Go on. Your work's more important than a mob. I'll see that you'll not be disturbed. Stand where you are. Put those guns down and surrender. Quiet. Listen to me. Dr. Stevens is in there. We want him, too. He's in Cahoops. Hey, quiet. Quiet. You, Sheriff. Are you one of the lynch mob? No, but... Now listen to me. The doctor's trying to save Lem's life. Don't listen to him. What? Well, you're waiting for the first to rush. Now, who will it be? Uh, now, listen to me. Not and I were with Decker when he was shot. Neither of us fired the shot, but fired by someone outside the house. The truth will come out as soon as Lem is able to speak. Same situation as Lem's cousin. Yes, the same situation. Sheriff, will you go inside? For what? Lem Decker may speak. You must hear what he says. Boys, we got to get the doc away if Lem's to have a chance. That all boys will finish him if the boy didn't. Hey, come on, come on. Talk all you want. But don't try to rush this door. Are you coming, Sheriff? Yes, I'm coming. In the hour that followed, the mob made several threats. But each time, the menacing guns of the Lone Ranger caused the men to fall back. In the meantime, Dr. Stevens worked with fierce concentration. He heard nothing but the labored breathing of the man on the table. Saw nothing but the small area in which he worked. He extracted the bullet. Inside the house, the Lone Ranger remained alert for any move toward violence. But the townsman had relaxed to an attitude of watchful waiting. Presently, the door opened and the sheriff appeared. Sheriff, 
Everything's all right. I know the killer. Good. The doctor wants to see you. I'll go inside. Then I'll go to the jail and tell Toto you'll be over to release him. Hey, what about Lynn Dick here? Boys, I've seen a lot of things in my day, but nothing to tie to what Doc Stevens just done. He brought a man back to life. Lem Decker's going to live. What's more, the masked man that stood here a minute ago was no more of a crook than I am. He was the man we've all heard about but never expected to see in these parts. The Lone Ranger. How do you know? I'll tell you how I know, Baldy. Lem Decker told me. How'd Lem know? He heard it from one of you men. And strange to say, it's the one who killed Lem's cousin... The one who robbed the bank. Them named the critter. I want you, Baldy. I'll show you. They'll hold you. I got it, Sheriff. I got his gun. Bring him in here. Let our doctor fix his leg before he goes to jail. My leg is stuck. It feels like it's been busted. I just get my hands on a mask, man. Baldy, you outsmarted yourself when you tried to outsmart him. You should have known better when you knew that he's the Lone Ranger. I'll kill Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part.